an entitled Karen steals gas from everybody in my apartment complex, siphoning it right out of everybody's gas tanks, all under the assumption that she deserves it way more than we do. And I'm honestly blown away by her entitlement, and I'm so happy that she got arrested by the police. Here's what happened. So five days ago, I was about to leave for my morning commute to university in the morning when my car failed to start up. What struck me as odd was that the fuel gauge said that I was out of gas. But here's the thing. I filled the tank up yesterday. I told my mother what had happened, and she allowed me to use her car. However, the same issue happened with her car as well. We would find out we weren't the only ones with this problem. As the day went on, the neighbors in the apartment complex faced the same issues with empty fuel tanks. And this is much to their shock and chagrin. This brought some complaints to the management about this incident. So I simply walked to the closest gas station with two gas cans to fuel up my car just to get back there to repeat the process with my mother's car. My father was already at work at four in the morning at the donut shop. I missed classes that day and had to self-study on the topics I struggled to understand. I later learned that not all the cars had their gas stolen. I think the cars in the front parking lot were the only ones affected. That parking lot is the smallest one out of the seven in total and it's the only one not gated. Just this morning, the culprit was caught by a neighbor who decided to look outside for some reason and saw her siphoning gas from a car. Well, he called 911 and the police put the cuffs on her. From what my other neighbors claim, the woman siphoned gas so that she wouldn't have to pay for it. Her defense was since we could pay rent, we could also afford to simply give gas away. Now here's the thing. For a three bedroom and two bathroom apartment for families, the rent is $1,400 per month. A lot of my neighbors were employed in low paying jobs, which limited their monthly spending and that included their gas budget. I mean, I remember a man crying because he would be late for work and might lose his job. Plus, he told everyone who comforted him that he couldn't afford to pay the extra $40 to get a full tank. Well, another man fortunately was willing enough to give the man enough money to pay for gas when he was able to fill up his car with a gas can I used to fill up mine. So as a result, this lady was being detained at the local police station and hopefully we never have to deal with her ever again. Wow, that is honestly like some next level entitlement. The fact that she went into some low income apartment complex and said, yeah, these people don't need gas money. Since they can pay rent, they could just buy more gas. Like seriously, that lady is out of her mind insane. How on earth can that even be justified? Like seriously, you stole from people you don't even know. You took gas right out of their tank and then you tried to justify it like you're the Joker from Batman. Like I'm sorry, that doesn't work in this situation. Now, according to the original poster, as well as some of the commenters, apparently this entitled Karen is probably going to be faced with some kind of misdemeanor, especially when you consider some of the state laws in the state that the original poster's from, which honestly is all completely deserved. Like, what she did is so unacceptable, and I just can't justify that under any normal circumstances. In my opinion, it is never right to steal from other people, and if someone does do something like this, then they absolutely should have to pay for their crimes, whether that's paying the money back for the gas that she stole, or even doing, like, jail time, because this is so inappropriate. Not to mention the lost wages that some of these people probably ran into. And the original poster had a full tank of gas. I think I would have lost my mind if that happened to me. Like, I don't know about you, but gas prices are already expensive enough. So thankfully, something's being done about this weird entitled Karen. And hopefully this never happens to the original poster or their neighbors ever again. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the jerk for not wanting to take my friend to work anymore after I quit the job that we both used to work at? Here's what happened. So I've been driving my friend to work every Monday through Friday since about July of this year and I don't want to do it anymore. We both got hired on at a job at the same time and we hit it off right away. She even said that she expected us to become best friends very quickly and you know what? We did. When we talked more, I discovered she didn't have a car and would ask friends and families for rides or just pay for lifts to get to work. I knew it cost her a lot of money on top of the bills that she already had, so I offered a driver instead. She lives on the way to the job from my house, so it just made sense for me to make a small detour and pick her up in the mornings. She agreed to give me $20 each week for gas and snacks, which was way less than she was paying for a single ride through Lyft, and this was honestly no biggie. Well, that is until I quit. To be fair, I told her I understood my quitting would put her in a really bad situation, since she depended on me to get her to work. So 
I agreed to keep taking her, which would allow us to still hang out too. But here lately, I've been getting really poor sleep and not waking up on time at all. It's caused me to be late a bunch this last week. I actually slept through my alarm yesterday for the first time in a while. When I woke up and realized the time, I called her in a panic and apologized profusely. I told her I didn't know what happened. I just said that I somehow didn't wake up on time and I could rush over and grab her if she didn't already have other means of getting to work. She then became very short with me, said to me that it's fine quite a few times in our conversation, all before ending the call. Now, I totally understand being upset in that moment. You expect your ride to be there and it didn't show. I get it. But she hasn't spoken to me since Friday morning when it happened and she's not responding to anything that I've sent her on TikTok like she usually does. Now, I'm wondering how she can be this mad at me when I have basically been doing her a favor. Oh, and remember the $20 a week she was supposed to give me? Well, it's only happened a handful of times. And the last time was maybe since July of this year. It's now the first few days of November. And at this point, she should have given me about $300 for all the weeks that I have driven her. But you know what? I actually just checked my transaction with her on Cash App. And I found that she's only sent me about $120. That leaves about $180 that I'm still owed. And she's probably going to tag another $20 on this week. I also don't appreciate how a lot of the time she gets in the car and is constantly on her phone with someone else. Sometimes she doesn't even speak to me until I get her to her job or even back to her house and it's usually only long enough to say goodbye. So not only am I giving you heavily discounted rides, if not free rides altogether, but I'm also your impromptu chauffeur, which is just great. So much for hanging out, right? So as you can see, this is clearly not working. Before we go any further, the original poster actually has an update to the story. Here's what they had to say. Well, after reading some of the comments, I realize I've been giving her way more than I should have, and she is not very grateful for it. But most importantly, she isn't really my friend in the slightest, which is something that I think I slowly figured out. Here's how the conversation went this morning. I said to her, hey, I wanted to let you know I can't take you to work anymore. It's hurting me financially and my sleep quality and my energy are really poor right now. I'm exhausted and it's not fair for you to have to be late because you're waiting on me. I hope maybe one of the people that works there that lives near you is willing to be able to take you because honestly, I just can't take it anymore. She responded by saying, well, I kind of figured it was going to happen and that was the end of the conversation. She didn't say something like, thanks for the help while you could, I really appreciate it, or something like, oh, it's okay, I'll figure something out. Nope, nothing like that. I just got that lame response instead. I still hope she figures it out, but she is absolutely not invited for Friendsgiving anymore, that's for sure. And I'm not even going to be fishing for a thank you or dignify any kind of response from that, because honestly, she really was using me, and thankfully, I figured that out sooner than later. It is really nice to see that the original post figure this out sooner than later. Like, first of all, you are not the jerk in this situation. Your friend, or should I say former friend, was absolutely using you left and right just to try and get some kind of ride out of you. And you know what? While you work there, I can see this absolutely working. Like, for me personally, I would be willing to give a co-worker a ride to work if they worked there with me and we were good friends. And it sounds like the two of you were friends at one point. But once you quit your job is honestly right when you should have said, hey, I'm not going to be able to give you any rides anymore. Because, you know, I kind of quit my job after all. The fact that you agreed to still give her a ride to work even though you didn't work this place any longer was a big mistake and a massive waste of your time. That's no longer you trying to be a good person. This is you getting walked all over and just being a people pleaser, which in my opinion is a massive negative quality. Like that is not a positive thing in your life. And it's also really unfortunate that she owes you so much money. Like she definitely owes you about $180 and it is so unacceptable that she didn't pay you on time or at all in some cases. So no, you are definitely not the jerk here. Your former friend was absolutely using you and you did not deserve to get treated in the way that you did. Would I be the jerk for reporting a gym attendant after they did nothing about a guy kicking me off a machine? Here's what happened. So to start things out, at 9 in the morning this morning, I went to my local gym. I did 5 minutes on the elliptical machine and then went to switch to a rowing machine. There were two machines and both were vacant when I walked up and I decided to choose the one closest to me. I adjusted the seat, the weight, I sat down and did a light stretch before starting the first set. I then was accosted by a middle-aged man who waved me down about 30 feet away saying to me, hey, get off of there, that's my machine. I'm using that, get off right now. Having sat down at the machine with no one near it and with no one's belongings on it or near it, I explained that
complained that I'd gather that it was not taken or reserved. Well, he continued to complain that he had still been using it despite walking away and angrily demanded I switch to the other vacant machine not even five feet away. Now, neither machine had electricity, so it's not like he was recording his stats or anything like that. I explained that having already sat down and adjusted the machine, I would be done with my set shortly and that he should feel free to use the vacant machine himself. He then yells a bit more and calls over the attendant and then gives off a belligerent rendition of how he was just walking around the gym in between sets and somehow I jumped in. I reiterated that the machine had been vacant when I approached it and sat down. Well, the attendant didn't clarify any of the rules or etiquette, but seemed to side with a man accosting me, saying only the words, oh, I see what you're saying, in an aside to the man and leaving it at that. Aware that this situation is continuing to cause a scene, and it would appear that I'm not going to be helped by the attendant, and being outnumbered and pressured to move, I stood up, shook the man by the hand, and switched machines, wishing him a good day. The attendant returned to his station without any further involvement, and I returned to focusing on my workout. The other guy also returns to his, but loudly starts muttering to himself in the vicinity. He says that I should be having some kind of respect because he was born in America, as well as other derogatory remarks, calling me a jerk amongst other things. I finished my set, took the name of the attendant on the way out, and then I just laughed. Now, I don't blame the establishment for the patron's racist sentiment, but I also don't feel like I was going to get help from the same guy that did absolutely nothing to stop the absolutely unnecessary confrontation. So honestly, would I be the jerk if I wrote a formal complaint after the gym attendant did absolutely nothing about this guy kicking me off of his machine? No, you absolutely would not be the jerk in this situation. That gym attendant did nothing to assist you. They just saw this one guy screaming and making a fuss about you taking a spot that he clearly abandoned. He very obviously took this guy's side and did absolutely nothing to mitigate the situation. Like, that is seriously such an awful way to conduct business, and in my opinion, if I was in your shoes, I 100% would be reporting that gym attendant for not doing their job or at least playing favorites. Also, on that note, I really hope you report that other guy for making those awful remarks about you. For reference, the original poster is 30 years old and they are an immigrant. So the fact that this guy would run up and be like, oh, you gotta respect me because I live in America, as well as some of the other like derogatory remarks that this guy made towards this guy, is really awful and absolutely should be reported. Like, I don't know about you, but that is not someone I would want at my gym if I'm going there to try and get a workout. So no, you would not be the jerk in this situation. The guy making those remarks and the gym attendant both really suck. And in my opinion, they both should be reported for the way that they treated you. Am I the jerk for not wanting to lend my friend money since it really seems like she only reaches out to me in the first place when she's in desperate need of some fast cash. And right now, with all things considered, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So lately, it has become a common occurrence that this one not super close friend of mine has been asking to borrow money from me. She does pay me back, but I still have to remind her to pay me back in the first place if she doesn't just give it to me right away. I think sometimes she hopes that I'll just forget. Last time, she asked for about $30 because her account went negative, and this time, she is asking me to send her $5 right now. I still have no clue what the reason is because I've not responded yet. I get that I'm not losing money because she is paying me back, but I just can't help but feel gross about the whole situation. One huge reason is because she doesn't text me at all unless she wants to ask me about money. We hang out very occasionally, and she'll text me stuff related to that on the day that we hung out, but nothing ever after that. Now, here's a really tricky part. She also has a boyfriend who makes much more money than I do. He makes more per hour and works more hours, so I know for a fact he has much more money than me. And I straight up asked her why she doesn't ask him for the money, and she says that she doesn't want to be lectured by him about using her money more wisely. But I personally think that's exactly the kind of lecture that she needs. What also makes me very uneasy is when I clearly am hesitant these other times to give her money, she'll just keep asking and giving excuses until I give in to her. And when I do, she'll say in caps, oh my gosh, thank you so much, I'll pay you back. And it honestly makes me want to throw up. It makes me feel like she's saying, oh, I only like you because you gave me money. Now, lastly, I know she has other friends, so I'm not sure why she only asks me for money. It's also giving me the idea that she thinks that I'm a pushover. I don't want to start problems with her, but I really don't want her to get the idea that I'm some kind of pushover, while also being her bank that she can just keep lending her money from because she can't manage hers properly. Like, I am a nice person, but only to the 
extent of not being a pushover. She has cared about me in other ways in my life and has done nice gestures, but she has also definitely crossed boundaries of mine that I've clearly went over, which makes her seem incredibly ignorant. So honestly, am I the jerk here for not wanting to lend money to my friend anymore? What should I do? I do not think you're the jerk at all. Here's the thing. You can still be friends with this person, but you saying, hey, I can't give you money anymore should not dissolve this friendship at all if it really was a good friendship in the first place. Like the way you've described her really does seem like she's only going to you for money. Like she clearly sees you as some kind of like get out of jail free card, whether it's just for some like quick cash or stuff like that. She really does go to you to try and get money so that she can save her skin. And hey, I get it. We all are in a pinch sometimes, but the fact that she keeps doing this and doesn't have the decency of paying you back on time, that in my opinion is really inappropriate. And that is a massive red flag. Also, this lady has a boyfriend. Why on earth is she going to you asking for money when she should be going to her boyfriend and trying to get that figured out? And you know what? I completely agree with the original poster here. It really does seem like she needs some kind of lecture or some kind of intervention to say, hey, you need to be better with your money. Now, here's the thing. If this happened once or twice, it really would not be that big of a deal. I mean, friends borrow money all the time, but it's the fact that she does this constantly and it's starting to become a problem for you. That's where I think she really crossed the line and this absolutely needs to be corrected. So no, I don't think you would be the jerk for telling her, hey, I can't give you any more money. I think it's completely reasonable for you to put your foot down in this situation and tell her straight up that you cannot give her any more money because what you've described sounds really sketchy and it really does seem like your friend is definitely using you. I have a huge crush on my boss after going through a really bad breakup of almost six years and now I'm considering asking him out or at least trying to pursue some kind of relationship and I'm now at a loss as I seriously don't know if this is a good idea or if this is going to cause me problems. Here's what happened. So to start things out, I went through a traumatic breakup in July and this was a six-year relationship that fell apart. We lived together and it was extremely unexpected. I am only just really in the last month or six weeks starting to feel okay by myself. My life has changed a lot since then and I've put a lot of work in to make new friends, do more, and work on myself as well as work overtime at my job. The working overtime has led to a huge crush developing on my boss. For reference, I'm 23 years old and my boss is 28 years old. He's my line manager, so not technically a real manager, but still my manager. He's not my type at all. He's really the complete opposite of my type, but I feel so drawn to him. He's quiet, thoughtful, and dresses really well, and he has really good morals. The crush has really grown legs and ran away from me, and I have no idea whether there's a chance of it developing any further, but I'm honestly enjoying it so much. I'm really loving having someone else from my mind to default to when I'm bored instead of my ex. It's helping me to go about my life with a new energy, as well as get excited about things more, because I'll tell him and show him things that I've done. Also, before anyone would ask the question, yes, I do have daddy issues, but really, I just wondered whether this is going to be okay or not. I know no one is a mind reader, but he has shown some signs of interest. Whether that's on a friendship level or more, I can't really tell. I did see him on a dating app, so I know he's single. I don't know if I'm ready to start any type of relationship anytime soon, but I think if this did pan out, it would be a very slow burn. So maybe it would be easier to continue healing while it happens if it goes that way. How do I even go about letting him know I'm interested without making work awkward if he isn't? Should I even let him know in the first place? Should I try to stop crushing on him? I just really don't know. All my friends think it's very funny because it's definitely the type of behavior I would engage in. I'm a hopeless romantic and when I fall hard for someone, I fall incredibly hard. It all feels fine right now, but I'm just scared. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Okay, let me just say it first and foremost, I think this is an awful idea. In my opinion, I think it's a terrible idea to date anybody in the office or space that you work in. Like sure, it can work out and sometimes it does. But in my own personal life, I've seen things go south really quickly in ways that you would not expect. Like the fact that he's your manager and that you already went through a breakup and you're already kind of lonely and you're dealing with that whole situation, that in my opinion is a massive red flag for yourself that you seriously need to pump the brakes. Like I really would be cautious about pursuing this any further than you already have. Like maybe keep things casual and have some kind of like friendship with this guy, but pursuing your manager at work all because you have a crush on him, in my opinion, is an awful idea and I just don't endorse that in the slightest. Because what if that relationship falls apart? What if he really rejects you in a serious way and now you're stuck 
answering to this guy every single day of your life at this job. Like, think about it for a second. You have the potential of ruining your place of employment all because you have a crush on your manager. Like, I really think you need to put yourself in a better perspective and realize that you just got out of a long-term relationship and you had a bad breakup. So maybe that's why you're feeling drawn to people that are unlike your ex. And this situation definitely sounds like a rebound situation in my opinion. So yes, I think this is an awful idea and you're only going to get yourself in trouble or at least get yourself hurt. And unless you want to try and make your workspace a miserable place to work, in my opinion, I think it would be wiser to look elsewhere if you really want to pursue a different relationship. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.